Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, our readings today are very powerful about God remaining in us, that we remain in Jesus. If you knew that you were going to die tomorrow, what would you say to those that you love? The Gospel reading is after the Last Supper, and it's about right before Jesus goes to the garden the, and suffers his agony in the garden. And he's telling his disciples the most important thing probably that he's taught them those three years, to remain in him. Remain in him just as he's remained in the Father. And he puts the analogy of a, a vine and the branch that as long as we stay connected to that vine, as long as we stay connected to God and Jesus in our lives, we're going to be okay. And sometimes those branches, in order to be more fruitful, need to be pruned. Now, people that know gardening very well understand how to prune and stuff. I do not. I have what is called the thumb of death. I can kill anything, <laughs> except dandelions. I can't kill dandelions. But I think it's really... You know, I could give you so many examples in my life where I felt God all of a sudden just show up and, and be there for me when I'm trying to do his work. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm at a standstill. I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden, God opens a door somewhere, unexpectedly. But instead of giving you an example of my life, which I often do, I thought I'd talk about the person in our first reading, Saul. Because so many people don't understand him so much. And Saul was a Pharisee. He was born in Tarsus, which is right on the border of Greece, modern-day Greece, and he grew up a Roman citizen, yet he was a Jew, and he, being near Greece, he understood the Gentiles, the Hellenists, and he understood their culture. So it made him very unique to go out later on in mission, because he understood all the different people and all their thinkings and the way of life that they believed. But he was very, very passionate about God. He studied under one of the leading Pharisees of the time, a man named Gamaliel, which no one, no one will ever remember. But he loved God so much, so passionately, that when he saw these followers of this Jesus Christ following a, a common man who was crucified on the cross, he couldn't understand it. It infuriated him. This isn't the second Messiah. This isn't the coming of the Messiah. You're worshiping a guy that was crucified on the cross by the Gentiles, the Roman authority, that the Jews put to death? How could this be the second coming of God? He was expecting a, a king like David or a, a lawgiver like Moses, someone with so much wisdom like King Solomon. It couldn't be this guy. And he wanted to stamp it out because he loved his faith so much. And he goes out and he starts crucifying the followers of Jesus Christ. And he's on his way to Damascus to arrest more of them, to take them out of the streets and stop spreading this terrible information the way he perceived it. When he's struck down by this flash of light and he hears, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he realizes that it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's blinded for three days. A symbolism of that he hasn't been seeing God at all. What he thought was God, he didn't understand. And when his eyes are opened, Barnabas shows up to take care of him. Barnabas means son of encouragement. And all the saints throughout all the time, and even us in our modern day, sometimes we need encouragement. We need that friend to guide us, to take care of us in our, our low moments. And Barnabas takes him back to Tarsus, back to his home. And there he remained for 10 years. No one heard from him. And over those 10 years, he started to read the Old Testament and realize that Jesus Christ was indeed the second coming. The Messiah had arrived. And he had to retrain himself. He had to relearn it. You know, this flash of light, so many people think Paul fell off the horse and got up and started preaching. No, it doesn't happen that way. We're all on a journey. It all takes time. We can't just wake up and know it all. We have to work at it. 
We have to study the Bible. We have to come to church. We have to receive the sacraments. We have to pray to God and pray for understanding and the Holy Spirit coming into our lives. And so Paul did that for 10 years. And then Barnabas went back and got him. And they took him out on mission. And he'd go to the different temples of the different cities. And he would say to his fellow Jews, the Messiah has come. It's God in us. It's being tied to that vine. We're the branches. He's the vine. And God remains us. And actually, in all his letters to the Corinthians and the Romans and the Galatians, all of them he wrote, he says 83 times, in Christ. It's not me who lives, it's Christ who lives in me. It's not me doing this stuff, it's God working through me. And that's what we're called to think about. And yet, Paul at that moment, when he had that flash of light knocked to the ground, he was being pruned by God. So he could bear much more fruit. He loved God, but he didn't understand everything. And like us, we go through life not fully understanding so many different things. And as we grow, we move forward, we receive the sacraments, we come to church, we learn about the Word of God, our prayer life, We grow more too, eventually being pruned to understand better, to bear more fruit. And things in our lives happen, terrible things sometimes. And we don't understand why. Sometimes we can't accept it. It hurts. But we have to trust in God because we know that maybe there's a purpose to God's plan we don't understand. We're merely His creation. And we have to trust in God. And God reminds us, as Jesus tells his disciples, he's going to be crucified, but remain in me, because I will be with you always. Always. I'm here, I'm present. You might not see me physically, but I'm with you always. Have patience, have faith, believe, trust. Some of those things that are so difficult at some times in our lives, Yet that's what God's asking of us. And if we do, we stay anchored to that vine, stay anchored to God and Jesus in our lives, we're going to be so fruitful. We're going to do things that are beyond our our imaginations, beyond our thinking. And I'm witness to that in my own ministry, working overseas and doing stuff here. Things I never thought I could do, allowing God to work through me, I've been far more fruitful than I could ever dream. And so this weekend, we have to think about what needs to be pruned in our lives. What is it in our lives that's keeping us away from God, that's severing that relationship to the vine? Is it money, lust, power, our egos? Everyone look at me. It's a time for us to reflect on What's keeping us apart from God? What's severing that branch in the vine in our lives? We're still connected. We're still holding on. God wants us to be fully alive in Him. And it's such a blessing. Because it's not us who live. It's Christ who lives in us. And in this world of so much difficulty and sadness and sorrow, you, my friends, are the branches all ready to flower and bloom and and enlighten this world because that's the gift God's given you. He's given all of us. Just stay anchored to that vine as hard as it may be because God is in all of us.